history. Of, and, uh, well, I'll I'll tell you a little history of Washington, just just what I can remember. <coughs> that uh, the one thing I was going to start with was that I joined the Methodist Church at six years of age, and that was the time that my mother told me to tell them that my name was Harriet Lucille Burkett, and I'd always been called Hattie. You want me to talk in there? And uh, so anyway, I was named for two aunts and a friend of my mother's. Their names were all Harriet, but one was Harriet Wookie. They ran a uh, piano store in Peoria. And another one was my Aunt Hattie Morris. And, uh, and who was that? let's see. Aunt, oh, Aunt Hattie Zinser. We called her Aunt, but she was my mother's classmate. I, I remember that, all those things that they told. <laughs> and she, and I'll never forget that in my life, that uh, when he asked me that, that I thought, well, I didn't know my name was Harriet. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and I was just thinking around the square that the old Wednesday night band concerts, it was always every Wednesday night. And we looked forward to it, you know. And we, well, I'll tell you on Wednesday, we really towed the mark because we want, didn't want to miss it. That was when we were real little. Well, that was in the horse and buggy ages. We didn't have a car then. And then the next thing was that we got older. We went and we met, met our friends around the square and walked around and around and around the square where the band was playing and they had a recess. Then we'd go in, into Zinser's drugstore and get an ice cream cone. It was a nickel in. <laughs> and a soda was 10 and 15 cents. I, that, that was another thing that I was thinking about. <coughs> and, um, yeah, you could buy a cone for a nickel. That was, that was about all we had to spend, see. And then there was uh, the old, the bandstand was in the same place where the square is now. But underneath was the town pump. It was under the Grant, the bandstand. <clears throat> and then I remember that, I didn't remember it, but I remember of them telling about uh, the uh, fire station over on the south side of the square burned. And then in those days, they had to haul the uh, fire engine with horses. And there was a livery stable on the corner. Now, I remember when the liver stable was there because we used to drive from the country a mile and a half out south of town and put the horses in there and then take the train to Peoria. There were two trains running. I know I made some notes of that. <clears throat> we had a big celebration every 4th of July for years and we went way out south of Washington on the old Sloniger corner. Now that was the Sloniger's that finally moved to town and Chester Sloniger bought the house from my uncle Lafayette Burkett on Jefferson Street. And that's where they were a long time. Oh, I, I started to tell that my grandfather Van Meter lived out on West Jefferson and he built that big white house where Edna Feek used to live. And uh, I used to walk from that corner clear up to the Methodist Church with him and stayed with my grandparents went overnight, maybe Saturday and Sunday. And uh, we always had to watch out for the trains that were going. There were two trains. There was a TPNW and the CNA. We went as far as Peoria on those and then to Chicago. As I got older, 
I used to take the CNA to Chicago to visit my aunt. But uh, as I remember, the ticket to Peoria was 50 some cents. <laughs> <laughs> what it was, clear to Chicago, I don't remember. Oh, my mother, what I started to tell was that my mother taught school out of the Cooper Station School, and she had to walk. Now, do you know where that is? And uh, <clears throat> she got $30 a month, and, and she had to build the fire after she got there in the winter. And when the weather was bad, she had to stay at some of the farmers' places there. I told you that already. The house that he built out here on the corner was right is right across from Burkett Court, where my my uh, brother Chester Burkett bought this. Now it's all built up in houses. <coughs> Then my grandfather Brickett built this house down on East Jefferson where Dorothy Belsley has her beauty shop. <clears throat> what year? There was a, um, uh, the Danforth Hotel East on the east side of the square and uh, <clears throat> that was that was a long two-story building that later on, Bruno Myers Grocery Store was uh, on the corner. The hotel took up almost the whole block. Then around on the west side of the square was Zinser Drugstore and Soda Fountain. That's what I said, where we had to go to get our cones and sundas and things. And then on the west side of the square was the big department store, which was Pfeiffer's. You know how to spell it? <laughs> P-F-E-I-F-F-E-R, Pfeiffer's store. You could get everything there from a button to a furniture, I guess, Any, anything you wanted. <laughs> then later there was a movie in Opera Place up on the second floor of the old Danforth Bank. But you, before that, we had a dance floor up on the Hypo building on the, across on Main Street, right back of the bank. And uh, that was the... Uh, Dennert Bank then. Then then we took we bought the Dennert Bank out and that's where we started the State Bank, Washington State. But um, we had a dance floor, let's see now. Mr. Heipel had his um, his um, insurance company office on the first floor. And the second floor was uh, the second floor was the where they danced. That was it. And then there was a third floor that they used to have plays and things there. But when that when we started when they started the other one built built over the old Danforth Bank, that was much nicer because it was new and there was. Well, only one flight of stairs to go up the side of the bank. <coughs> then uh, Mr. Steinley bought the drugstore there, and Mrs. Steinley just passed away at 91 years of age. They are buried in Kiwani.
where they came from. Oh, and we had a circus in back of us, which is down on Adams Street, back of Jefferson Street. There was an alley down there, and uh, it was called the Sloniger Pasture, which was on East Adams. And uh, there's where the circuses always were down there, as far as I remember. I was in high school when uh, they built the Mennonite church. That's not quite so old. Let's see. Well, I'll probably think of a lot more, but I, uh... Tell me your parents were. Oh, I see. My, my parents were... <clears throat> uh, my mother was Tyna Van Meter, and that came from out on West Jefferson, where my grandfather built. And my dad was Lester Burkett, who lived, we lived on a farm south of town mile and a half south. His father came here. First, I used to think he came from England, but he was real young. His father did, came from England. And <clears throat> my grandpa Burkett, uh, well, he bought here way over a thousand acres. They had 10 children. And he tried to divide it all up, all around here. But, uh, it was a little hard to do, but I remember that that's what the farm we got. Then there was the Morris farm. The Mo they, it, my mother aunt had a Morris. And uh, then William Burkett out east and Uncle Charlie Burkett. Huh. Isn't that awful? I can't think of it. Didn't the Burkett have a lot of land there where Bradley Park is now? Oh yeah, there was over where Bradley. Yeah, that was a, that was a cousin of my dad's. That had a lot of land. It was all that uh, Glen Oak Park was a Burkett's, but that Burkett was a cousin, and uh, they they bought that. The city of Peoria bought that from them for twenty four dollars an acre. James was looking up records here not long ago, and he said, "Did you have Did you have an uncle or what was Grandpa the Meter's name?" And I said, "His name was Davis." Well, he had that, but anyway, in the records, some Davis, it was brother of my grandfather, came here. <coughs> And he bought land down in Deer Creek, and uh, he paid, uh, he decided to sell it and move to Washington. Their burial ground is out in Will Hart's pasture, where this, this land meter was. And uh, he sold that land for $2 an acre. But that's called, that's the Crane property. That's on the, the Hypo side, see, on Ray's mother's side. Well, if you think of anything else, I ought to tell. I don't know. I just don't know. You say that. Well, uh, there were the van meters that located in Deer Creek. Did I tell you that? Yeah. Well, okay. Now, th these Van Meters that are coming to Caroline's uh, evidently are that other family. And they are buried out here in the Wilhart pasture or ground out there. Uh, north, and, uh, north and east of Washington. 
and uh, they, 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 they uh, and I found out that uh, that uh, they did live in Deer Creek, and then they sold the land. They got two dollars an acre for it, but who who bought it then? I do not know. No, but tell about Squire Baker, your grandmother's father, or whatever you said. Baker. Oh yes, my my grandmother was uh, I I don't I think she was a sister of Squire Baker, so that that was a Baker Cemetery, and I had an uncle that I think they brought him here, and it was Uncle Lafayette Birkin or uh, Van Meter, and um, then it's been so long ago that. Uh, those things happen, but I just don't remember too much about it. Oh, no, you wouldn't remember. Uh -huh. What? You wouldn't remember. It would just be history no, that no, you have no, seen. No, only what I heard. Yeah, what James has found. Yeah. Well, Jeff, yeah, I know that James found out some of this. I think that's enough. I married uh, Ray Heifel, who was one of the youngest uh, of the... Of the uh, Heifel family, which were cousins of Car Caroline's, and uh, <clears throat> now I have two sons. My husband, Ray, died seven years ago. Ray, second, is 52 years old now, and James is 49, and Ray runs the bank at Abingdon, Illinois, but he lives in Peoria now. <clears throat> and James is, she, he was a 10th judicial judge in Tazewell County, and two years ago he was elected to the appellate court, third district appellate court, which, which meets in Ottawa. He has an office in Pekin, and we have now, James has uh, three children, Jeremy, Jonathan, and Rachel. Jeremy's in his third year at high school, at college, and Jonathan is first year at college in Albion, Michigan, <coughs> and little Rachel is in uh, freshman year at Pekin. That's the three children. And Ray has five children, Susan and Mark and Sally and Lara and David. So I have four grandsons and four granddaughters. And uh, of course, none of those are married. 